I love a game that you can just pick up and play without jumping through a bunch of hoops. Have some fun with, set it down, walk away from it, and when you come back, it's like you never left. Dismantle is definitely one of those games. There's just one problem that I have with it. I couldn't put it down. How's it going? It's Hesh from No Frills. I've been playing Dismantle for a little bit, and it's a pretty fun game. I currently just moved house a few hours away, so I've been without internet for a few days, and this has been great to pick up and play in between lumping washers and dryers. It's a top-down action-adventure zombie RPG building crafting survival open world game, if that makes any sense. I'm, I'm sure it doesn't, but hey, let's check it out. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of a top-down perspective. I like to get a little closer to the action, and I really like to explore the environments and see the detail put into the art, even if it's low-poly. I love it. I really appreciate the fogging and the depth of field that they have going on with this one. It actually really complements the art style and almost gives a bit of a tilt-shift effect to it, and that's freaking sweet. The controls are pretty basic. You can bash the crap out of things, you can sprint, and you can dodge roll thing. That's pretty much it, and that's really all you need. Your main objective is to get off this island, and in order to do so, you're gonna have to make a whole bunch of crap to help you along your journey. The only way to get the materials to make this garbage is to dismantle everything around you, and that's pretty fun. There's really not a whole hell of a lot in the way of like tool and weapon variety. You really don't have any weapons at all, aside from a couple throwables. Uh, you got some throwing knives. I was able to get uh, triple shiv, they call it, and uh, some handy grenades. These are pretty fun. You know I love to blow things up, and uh, there's plenty of that. Not the biggest explosions I've seen, but satisfying nonetheless. As with the tools and weapons, there's not a whole hell of a lot in the way of enemy variety, and they're honestly not that dangerous at all. They're more of a distraction, uh, kind of an obstacle to get around, but that's no problem at all. I'm really not here to slaughter a bunch of stuff. I want to tear stuff apart, kill a thing here or there, just kind of make my way through the story. It's very much a pick up and play, but it's got a surprising amount of depth and the map is absolutely huge. At least it feels that way. They filled this out quite nicely. There are a lot of little points of interest just dotted around the map from like wishing wells. There's these tombs that you can explore. These are awesome. They've got little puzzles in them. There are these signal towers all over the map that you can link together to use as a fast travel system. Or you can outfit them with these transmitters that'll let you like permanently kill all the enemies dropping these mana bead things that you use for other upgrades. As you level up, you'll get to choose a buff for your character. It increases your stats in certain areas. You'll also be able to unlock new items to craft. You'll be able to make new items of clothing that are going to help you in certain areas of the game with certain buffs. You'll also be able to make some trinkets. These come in handy. You're definitely going to want to unlock everything. I really like what they've done with the farming and cooking here. The first time you make a recipe, it will give you some permanent effects. And uh, farming is stupid simple. You just stick in the ground, wait an hour, come back, you got your stuff. You'll be able to gather all the ingredients you need anyways just from wandering around the world. But it's definitely worth it to spend some time with the cooking mechanics. The bosses are pretty cool, but they're nothing too crazy. This isn't a Souls-like game or anything like that. I get the impression that this game was intended for a more casual audience, and if it is, they've done really, really well with it. It's not too hardcore, but there's enough there to keep you going. It's a game to pick up and play and have fun with, but not get stuck to forever. You know, you don't have to grind and grind and grind for hours to make any meaningful progress at all. You can pick it up, play for 20 minutes, and actually do something. The game may seem very wide but shallow at first, I think that was the intent here. I'm not going to speak for 10 tons. They did a great job with this game, but I think they wanted to offer a game that pretty much anyone can play. It's got a little bit of something for everyone without being too overly difficult, but it's not entirely a pushover either. I've put a decent amount of time into this one and I've barely unlocked half the map. I can't wait to see what else is in store for me. I've been having a blast with this one. If you're looking for something that's really hardcore and has all the really deep, deep systems, this isn't the game for you. If you're looking for something that's completely arcadey button masher, this one might not be for you either. It's got a little bit of something for everyone, as long as you're looking for kind of a pick up and play, more casual experience. Dare I say, a cozy survival game? I don't know, let me know what you think. Have fun. How's it going, it's Hash. If you liked what you saw even a tiny bit, do me a favor, shoot me a like and a sub, and if you're feeling awfully generous, 
give me a share, man. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks.